I think in lots and lots of ways they are super special. There's not too many places in the world that a potato is not grown and used and they're incredible. I could talk on about them forever. This is The Producers. I'm Danny Vallant. Kerry Farrell and her spud sister Catherine farm potatoes, source potatoes and sell potatoes to fine dining restaurants, farmers markets and online. Third generation farmers and providors, Kerry loves being a spud specialist, enjoys the opportunities for connection and education and truly believes you can never be too enthusiastic about potatoes. I'm Kerry from Spud Sisters, Kerry Farrell. I work with my sister Catherine, Catherine Ramage. Uh, my, my dad, Boyd Ramage, um, is a potato farmer from just out of Ballarat. Um, we have land at Millbrook. Uh, we uh, farm potatoes and we supply potatoes uh, to the restaurants, um, lots of very high-end restaurants and um, farmers markets, uh, little cafes. We um, sell online. That's um, taken off over over um, COVID, during COVID. So that's um, a great way to supply and send potatoes um, from Queensland, um, New South Wales, uh, all, all around really. Um, and uh, we uh, have a great, great fun, great bit of fun, Catherine and I, um, <laughs> um, selling potatoes and, and um, really I'm full of potato guff and I love sharing my knowledge of it to, to everyone and anyone who wants to listen. Kerry's whole family has been involved in farming in various ways, from dairy to Christmas trees to spuds. And even though she moved to Melbourne, had her own kids and worked in other areas, it only took a little bit of arm twisting for her to rejoin the family enterprise. Well, we're a third gen generation potato farming family. My grandfather was a potato farmer uh, and a dairy farmer, had the first uh, dairy farm in, uh, the first dairy in Ballarat um, and having two sons my grandpa had two sons and lots of daughters that helped in the dairy and the and the potato farm and they uh, when it came time of course to split as sometimes happens in farming families um, then my dad took the potato side and my uncle Jeff uh, took the dairy side so um, that sort of started our our or well, my dad's um, um love of potatoes I suppose you always, always had it but um, then um, my brother came along and um, four sisters uh, so Braith had to work pretty hard when he was um, a young kid and um, we kind of uh, dad outgrew blocks of land that that he had and had potatoes in and um, I bought bigger blocks of land and now we kind of um, uh, have land at Millbrook. My, my dad's passed on, but my brother's still very much involved in the potatoes. He also grows um, um, Christmas trees on our farm as well. And um, we, um, we run the Salvation Army Christmas tree um, fundraiser each year. So come December, it's all a little bit crazy, <laughs> crazy mayhem. But, um, you know, we get through it. The family kind of gets through it. Um, but my dad, um, when, I, when I first, being a country girl, you, you, when I first came down to, um, to Melbourne, um, then uh, I worked at different reception jobs, et cetera, et cetera, and I ran a couple of businesses on uh, myself. Um, had a little sandwich bar in the city. And um, my um, uh, then I think my my dad actually well after I was married and babies came along um, the next chapter of new life um, my dad said um, uh, why what, he came down with a load of potatoes he was taking spuds into um, into uh, a processing place somewhere down in Melbourne and he came through and said well, why don't you why don't you take these to the, the the girls in the kindergarten care you know the one that you know the girls that that, that are in there they'd love these fresh spuds. And I, <laughs> I kind of, we all laughed at that and said, oh, that's not going to happen, Dad, that's a bit ridiculous. But um, in actual fact, uh, he kept persisting. And my mum, who has, you know, great business sense um, as well, she kind of could see that there would be, you know, there would be a bit of a future in it as well too. And so they both encouraged me and, uh, you know, <laughs> having a, a, a bit of a crack at having, running my own business. I thought, oh, well, 
well, I would I would give it a go. So um, that's what I did. And I think we started with letterbox drops and just gathered and grew a little business from there, just really locally. And then it kind of grew on to supplying um, other restaurants and little businesses along the way. And um, then my sister, uh, Kath, um, I, I suppose this is 35 years in the making for me, and my sister Catherine um, decided to have a bit of a job change and she um, she also thought that um, she would join me. So then we combined and made Spud Sister. So Catherine, I think, has been with me nearly 20 years, might be 18, 19, 20 years uh, that we've been together and We've kind of grown a little business, I suppose, with um, having that farming knowledge, that background of, you know, what's seasonal and what's coming up and um, an understanding a little bit about um, about what product to suggest. And um, then it's kind of really grown from, from there, really. The Ballarat region has a proud potato history planting potatoes in late spring to harvest in autumn and through the winter. But supplying all year round means connecting with simpatico growers in other parts of Victoria. Because in Victoria, like in our district, so in Ballarat, uh, it's a winter growing potato. And for many, many years, it used to be the, the biggest um, seed producing um, area of, of Victoria, in Australia, really, where uh, a winter growing um, area. So we would um, put potatoes in um, just before Christmas, depending, I suppose. But if you can get, you know, an early crop in in November, then it will be up by um, by late February, early March, you know, depending if all the, the you know, the, the weather gods are, are in your, um, in your, are in your favour. And then we would harvest from March through till, um, August uh, thereabouts and September they're starting to get a little bit long in their their tooth um, as far as uh, you know that starchy that starchiness I was telling you about sometimes they it kind of changes around then and then that's when um, I start to look at um, at other areas and other districts that have potatoes that are coming through in and around Warrigal and places like that they have a longer season um, they don't get so many frosts that like they're doing in Ballarat or certainly down on the peninsula as well, which is another part where the potatoes can come from. So in our off-season, what we call our off-season, we would work with um, the Hawks Farm down on the peninsula. They um, they do fabulous produce and also the Jones Farm. Um, they also, the, Gordon's a fabulous, um, um, well, he's, he's a great you know he's a great person, but he's also a great farmer, and you know we kind of work in pretty well with one another. We understand um, how it kind of um, works, and um, yeah, we 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 try to work in with one another. Um, and Richard, Richard Hawke, so they're the when, when you're when when Ballarat district, and when we don't have potatoes, um, that's where they come from. Potatoes are humble, but that doesn't mean simple. There are about 5,000 varieties worldwide. Kerry is passionate about educating cooks and chefs about the essential differences between floury and waxy potatoes and guiding her buyers towards spud magnificence for every recipe and occasion. Potatoes are terribly complex um, uh, little vegetable and uh, because they do change, because the, the, the variant in so many varieties between a good floury potato and a good waxy potato, there's quite a range that runs in between, but really it's only the floury potatoes that will, will fry and roast. The waxy ones won't do it and they probably would handle the cool storage a bit more if, they, if you had to put them into cool storage, but floury ones don't like the cool storage. Flour Flowery potatoes are very starchy. So if I, at the, on my farmer's market, when we're at the farmer's market, um, Catherine and I have uh, our potatoes kind of in an order and they go from the, the starchiest potato or the driest potato that might be your um, rosti or your hash browns or your frying potato, um, the ones that you need to have um, a bit of crunch and, and they are starchy. So, um uh, they are, they are the ones that will be best um, roasted uh, as well as frying. Then it kind of works its way to a bit of an all rounder. So we'll we'll just go back one step. So 
um, the, those starchy potatoes would be like a, a Yukon Gold or a Maris Piper or an, um, a Russet or an Innovator. Those are the, your starchy potatoes that will, will do all of that for you. And then not as starchy, it would be uh, a, a Blue Moon or um, Gordon's got a new potato at the moment called a Merlot. Um, they, then a Sebago. They're kind of an all-round potato. They've got, like for making gnocchi, they've got a little bit of body to them. They're not as, they're not as flowery, they're not as fluffy. Uh, then, of course, you move on to waxier potatoes, so lighter, not too super dense is a, is a Dutch cream. Your Dutch cream ones are, are waxy, and then your uh, Nicola is waxy, but it's a, it's a, it's, it's a, a firmer um, waxy, so it's also like maybe the firmest or the waxiest or creamiest, if you want to put it like that too. Um, but they uh, don't crisp up. They're not, you know, they're very very hard to crisp up. To get a, a waxy potato to crisp up, you would, you know, have to part boil it and it'd have to be, you know, put into a very very hot oven and kind of tossed in in your oil and um, and then back in. There's a lot of fluffing around to get a, a waxy potato to crisp up. <laughs> Spud Sisters supply many of Melbourne's best restaurants and chefs. Not only do they share the expertise gleaned over long careers, but they also respond to chefs' particular needs and desires, building up trusting relationships through collaboration and ongoing conversation. It's been such a such a lovely journey, really being able to offer our expertise and being able to tweak our expertise. Kath and I have got some great um, restaurants that we we deal with, and and I think that you know that you know from you know from Attica's to Carlton Wine Room and. Um, uh, Shannon Bent, um, the Cash, the the Jacques Ramons, all, all of that Stoke House, um, all the way through through COVID, um, the boys from the Stoke House came down really, you know, um, religiously to the farmers market and tried everything on the table and kind of tweaked recipes and and the same with Jacques too. He, they, they all of the uh, chefs when they could kind of came down and, and went through different varieties for the, for the farmers market, but um, the, the the lovely thing about working with, um, um, you know, specialty restaurants um, is that uh, you get to show your expertise and they get to trust you. You know, when you're, when, like, for instance, um, I think you, some chefs um, think, and it's only because it's been what they've been told, they will get confused between waxy and flowery potatoes and, you know, they've been told by other people that's a waxy and that's a flowery. In actual fact, it's quite the reverse. So just being able to, um, you know, let them know which ones are in actual fact a flowery, and just because it's a deep yellow potato like our um, Andy and Sunrise at the moment, it should, it, by all means, it should look like as if it's a waxy potato because it's deep and golden and it's very yellow. And sometimes the waxy potatoes are like that, um, but it's not. It's it's very flowery. It's um, very fluffy, silky, crispy, crunchy. And if you tried to boil it to make a potato salad, it's just going to make mush. As new restaurants and cuisines come to the fore, there's an interest in less common varieties of potato. Peruvian restaurants such as Pastuso have inspired the Spud Sisters to plant exciting varieties that haven't been seen locally before. And we have a lot of Peruvian restaurants that are now showing a lot of interest in these deep coloured potatoes and they are the Andean sunrises originally. The seed would have originally come from, from the Andes and there's a Mayan twilight and a Peruvian gold. Uh, quite a lot of them, like Pastuso, the new... Um, Peruvian restaurant uh, that's in the city, they're taking a lot of um, different coloured potatoes and there is a lot of Peruvian restaurants who are showing an interest in it. So that's kind of, I suppose, the next thing um, for Spud Sisters is to start to plant some just sort of little small crops of interesting, unique little potatoes. And that's the thing, you try it with, you work with these beautiful, these fabulous restaurants that uh, that want that challenge you as well. You know, they want something new, something different, something that's sort of coming from um, overseas as a new trend on different things. And all of these uh, potatoes, these new varieties that um, that chefs uh, are, are wanting, and um, I get um, I, I get a lot of pleasure out of then being able to well, not only you know show um, and showcase different. 
uh, potatoes that are um, that are interesting and, and new, but also to help to educate. It's just trying to work with what your your high level chefs need, and just um, tweaking it and working out, you know, what will with with the ideas that they've got, what potatoes will best suit, and then the best potatoes that will suit going forward. Because you know they do change in their starches, and so you've got to be one step one step ahead of the of the punch. Going direct to consumer is an important part of Kerry's business. Farmers markets aren't just a source of income. They're a source of friendship and crucial feedback on how her potatoes are faring in people's kitchens. We do a lot of farmers markets, kind of down in the the southern end of town, I suppose, um, mainly. Um, But, you know, a bit of a good spread of farmers markets and we get great feedback straight away from your farmers markets customers. And and that's a really great passion of mine. I, I really love... Um, the farmers markets they uh, they are um, all the way through COVID they were such a such a joy to be able to speak to people and we've made some very good friends uh, long friends um, through the farmers markets and um, that's uh, you know you from week to week you get told uh, pretty quickly what's doing the best thing in the roasting or the the the, the frying or the mashing you I, I will see um uh I always said people coming that I know uh, the the husband's been sent out to 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 pick up the potatoes and he'll say to me, oh, Sandy's just told me to come and get potatoes. You'll know which one it is that she wants, um, and and I do. You know, we know which one that she, that people will want and will you know have them kind of sorted in a, a way they'll go. Or sometimes the you know sometimes because we we do an awful lot of chatting, Catherine and I and the girls when we're at the table. Sometimes I'll forget what side of the table that it was. I forget now. You told me it was a, a, a this that and the other. I say no, it's this one down here that you had for you know the, you had that one for um, you know you're, you're going to make some rosti and you made that for for oh yes that's what it was. It was the maris piper for the rosti. Oh, Oh, they were sensational. Well, we have a lot of a lot of customers that seek us out that are from Ireland and from England um, and parts of Scottish because there's not a lot of really lovely flowery potatoes that you can get um, off the shelf or in a supermarket, um, and they love flowery potatoes. So that's the the thing that would remind them most of home is uh, is uh, an Irish person and a flowery potato. My my mother in law was Irish, so she would say to me, Kelly, go up and get me the floweriest potatoes that you've got um, and I'll whip you up some um, some roast potatoes and she she was just wonderful. She would roast the potatoes. Sorry, she would parboil the, the floweriest potatoes that I had and then she would take them out into the, the night air where it was really cold and she'd flip them and there would be these billows of steam that would escape from the pot and uh, she would just make the most loveliest, crunchiest, fluffiest potatoes from uh, know, some kind of little spud with spring going on in the Irish camp, I think, somehow or another down the track, but they were just heaven. How does a potato specialist use her spuds? Carrie lets us into some spud sister secrets and even some family controversies. I make a pretty good potato salad, really, Um, uh, although one of my favourite ingredients is um, that I used to get from the supermarket was Fountain's um, Sweet Mustard. They don't make it anymore, so I've got to kind of try and invent my own little sweet mustard. But um, I do make a pretty mean potato salad. And I also, well, uh, there's a bit of a running, um, uh, a running, I don't know, um, challenge between my sons and I as to who can make the best roast potato. We've all kind of keep tweaking it to see who could do the better one. I I think actually my son's beating me at the moment. I'm going to have to smarten my my act up a little bit. But um, it's hard to beat um, roast potatoes with duck fat in them if you can kind of sneak a little bit of – but there again, see, there's – that's a controversy because duck fat really is a natural fat and you really don't need a lot of it. When you other oils and things that you have to sometimes add a little bit more, but you can just really just melt duck fat and just brush it over with rosemary and garlic over the top of your, um, you know, your King Edwards or your Maris Pipers or uh, beautiful um, Andean sunrise potatoes and they would be um, well, you, I, I never ever ha- have a problem with um, them disappearing out off the rack. There's a, a lot of boys that peer down the back of my oven saying, is there any more spuds, Mum? Like as if the oven's eaten the spuds. 
<laughs> no, you've just devoured three trays. There's no more spuds. <laughs> Potatoes are a staple around the world. Why do they keep Kerry interested and passionate? I think in lots and lots of ways they are super special. We've, they, they, there's not too many places in the world that a potato is not grown and used and, you know, people hardly even know that that they use so many potatoes. So when you ask, I don't, you know, we don't use so many potatoes, but when you think about what they actually do and consume, um, potatoes is a, such a basic um, vegetable all the way throughout the world and all the way throughout the world, um, people have their own special little dishes and so many of them have got potatoes in them. You know, if you think of a heartwarming recipe that has your, you know, that reminds you of something or reminds you of home, nearly all of them have got potatoes in them. There's, there's so many nationalities of people that I've spoken to uh, throughout my Spud Sister journey that I, I hope one day that I get to write a um, write a recipe book of, um, you know, of a Russian potato salad and a um, and a German potato salad, and um, they've all got their own little quirks on a potato salad, and I, I love it. I love that it's just a little bit different, and if you lined them all up together, you'd, you'd have a, a book full, I'm sure, <laughs> sure of it. But but potatoes are amazingly nutritious. You know, a lot of people sort of think to themselves that, um, that they are, are, are fattening, and it's not so. It's not so. There's no fat in potatoes at all. They're in highly nutritious. Their satiety rate keeps you fuller longer than than pasta and rice does. Um, it's got a very high satiety rate, and they've got the starches in the potato. Well, we're now learning how good and how valuable that starches are in your gut. So um, they're they're incredible. I could talk on about them forever so it probably bore the pants off you to be honest with you (laughs) they're nutritious versatile and beloved by home cooks and chefs alike they've also enabled kerry farrell to stay connected to the land and her family's heritage and build rich and warm connections with keen home cooks and some of australia's best chefs no wonder she's so happy to be a spud sister This is The Producers, a Deep in the Weeds production. I'm Danny Vallant. Stay tuned as we talk to some of Australia's best farmers, makers and growers. Follow us on Instagram at Producers Podcast or contact us via deepintheweeds.com.au.